This episode of Lawyers Tell All is brought to you by the Intake Academy. Are you ready to convert more callers to qualified cases, rapidly qualify good cases, and transform unqualified prospects to advocates for your firm, whether you're able to handle their case or not? Visit www.intakeacademy.com and discover how to cement relationships with more of your ideal clients. Get them to commit to you and send you more referrals than you ever thought possible. Welcome to the Lawyers Tell All podcast, where Chris Mullins, the preeminent sales and communications consultant in the legal industry, shows you how it looks through lawyers' eyes. Here, innovators in the trenches provide powerful insights that help you connect with new clients, handle the sometimes harsh realities of the legal profession, and embrace the mindsets needed to succeed. Be sure to visit our website at www.lawyerstellall.com. And while you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, lean in, tune in, and let's take a deep dive. Hello everyone, it's Chris Mullins with Lawyers Tell All, and today I'm going to be interviewing Shannon Friesen, and I'm going to let Shannon tell you about herself. Go ahead, Shannon. Hi, my name is Shannon Friesen. I am a practicing attorney uh, again now, and practicing in both civil and criminal litigation. I am recently retired from the bench, uh, having served the last 15 years uh, between the Superior Court in Massachusetts and the Boston Municipal Court um, and all its divisions. And prior to that, um, I was litigating uh, prior to the bench and and even prior to that uh, was litigating within the Marine Corps as a judge advocate. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so, and you said a practicing attorney again. What did you mean by that? Um, before going on the bench, I had uh, worked for a firm and um, uh, a litigation firm in Boston for about seven years before going out on my own. And then soon after that, joining the bench. So um, my firm, Freisen Law Firm, I'd opened in the early 2000s and is now reopened uh, in, in, a new, in a new space and time. Okay, a new space and time. So tell me what that's like opening up again in a new space and time what's what's that experience been like for you it's uh still relatively new i just left uh the bench in february oh yeah and so it has been quite a whirlwind uh, there's uh, obviously running your own business of any kind i think is its own challenge and um mm-hmm. adding you know uh defending and or representing people again, uh, is, is very fun, but nonstop. <laughs> so yeah, right. nonstop is essentially how it's been. Okay. Amazing. And, um, your military service, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I, I'm a Marine. I've been a Marine since 1994. And, um, when I joined the Marine Corps, I was in law school I was at Georgetown and went to officer candidate school Mm -hmm. uh, during the summer of my second year of law school and was commissioned uh, as a lieutenant and served from there on, went on to active duty after after the bar, went on to active duty uh, full time and worked as a judge advocate. I served in North Carolina uh, we have two, well, three main um, uh, aircraft uh, units there um, and, and bases. Camp Lejeune is what one that people know a lot about and have heard of, yeah. one of our biggest bases. Mm-hmm. Um, and as to the wing, we have Cherry Point up there and uh, for fixed wing and Marine Corps Air Station New River, uh, down at New River, for uh, helicopter squadrons, and that's where I was. So um, during that time, I was the prosecutor on that station for about 15 different helicopter squadrons that are aboard that station. And um, that's where I served my active duty time 
I left there, uh, came back to Boston as a reservist and have been back on active duty uh, a bunch of times uh, since then, doing, doing a bunch of smaller stints in um, Okinawa and Hawaii and, and other places, Mo most of the time prosecuting and or non-legal jobs altogether. Okay, so how did your how did this whole interest in legal, how did that whole thing start for you? Uh, you know, I think um, I think in college, I essentially decided I would I would go to law school and that that would be the profession uh, I would try my hand at. Um, I, I in looking at the skills that I thought lawyers needed and, and used, I thought I was good at you know arguing, uh, researching, writing, and um, and. And wanting, I think, you know, you have to have a desire to represent people, I think, uh, just to, to, to practice law um, in, in whatever capacity and on whatever side of the V, you've got to have some desire to represent and, and be an advocate. And so I had a strong desire to do that. Okay, so when you say a strong desire to represent people, um, so just drill down a little bit. What what is it that specifically made you feel like, yes, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to represent people. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I, I grew up in Chicago. I grew up in an um, all black neighborhood, went to all black um, grammar school and high school and at the Hyde Park in, in Chicago and uh, Adam Clayton Powell Elementary School there. And so, you know, these are, these are, you know, between poor and middle class areas and neighborhoods and and folks that I grew up with and, and that I was. I grew up uh, uh, with a single mom and, and very tight uh, finances and resources available. So I sort of saw firsthand um, the, the kinds of ills that that can cause, whether it be um, uh, crime and or substance abuse, mental illness, um, things that um, really look different in neighborhoods that don't have a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. And the um, ways in which people who are people of color interact with the criminal justice system became more and more clear to me as I uh, went through high school and college and saw uh, all of the disparities um, that are at play in the criminal justice system. And that's what is eventually led me to want to represent people. And, um, it, you know, when I, when I began, I thought that I would be representing people who were, uh, sentenced to death or facing death penalty cases. And uh, I certainly would still do that, but I have not done that yet. But when I began, you know, my, my desire to represent people was that, Oh, okay. uh, uh, intense, you know, to uh, represent people for for the highest of real life stakes. Um, more so, you know, so, so I was interested in criminal law specifically. So I know, I mean, so just why do you think it, you you really wanted to represent at that level? I mean, I know uh, you were talking about Chicago. I know that you were talking about you know, what it was like, but I mean, is there a little bit more to that? Well, I think, you know, in general, that's, that's been part of my personality and, and character yeah. is to whatever I'm doing, do it to the highest level possible and in the most serious way possible. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much uh, approached everything like that. Um, so it was certainly not to the exclusion of other types of criminal law, but I did think that, um, you know, if I, if I'm going to advocate, I, I would like to advocate on behalf of someone's actual life, yeah. um, and, and use whatever skills I have that way. So it's the same reason I joined the Marine Corps instead of any other branch, because yeah. it's the most intense, yeah. uh, you know, same reason I went to Harvard, you know, it's all, always, uh, striving, for the best and to do what I'm doing at the highest level. So um, when were you reaching for the bench or 
was that, I mean, that's the highest level too. So is that what you were reaching for? Did, what happened? How did that happen? I wouldn't say I was reaching for it. Um, okay. it I hadn't actually thought about being a judge uh, in any serious way um, until I applied. And so, you know, I, I was very much into being an advocate, a defense lawyer, uh, and defending people who are accused by the by the government and and litigation generally. I was also doing some um, employment law and other types of civil litigation. Mm -hmm. So I I was very into that. I hadn't really considered or set a plan to go on the bench, mm -hmm. but um, during my time working for myself in Boston. Um, I, I handled some cases and, and one in particular that I think kind of got the attention of a lot of people, in, including judges. And that was a, a quadruple murder case in the city of Boston um, where I defended the, the main defendant in that. And um, at the end of that, the, the judge, uh, as well as other people, um, recommended that I that I apply to the bench. And that's really the first time I, I actually thought about it when okay. it was recommended to me to do. Right. Um, and it seemed like a good moment in time in terms mm -hmm. of getting appointed. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was 39. So it seemed so I was a little on the younger side, I think, yeah. of appointees, but I did feel ready and and was ready to mm -hmm. do that type of work. Um, so it so so I applied um, after some encouragement. So it was never really a plan, but right. but it became it became uh, it became one. <laughs> it's so yeah, point. right, right. Just by your actions and everything. So and and, and people watching and and looking. Yeah. Um, so what do you feel like so far? Your accomplishments have been because you you got into to law to you know, to do good, to fight for, to fight for people. And so what do you think you've accomplished so far? Um, well, one thing I think I've accomplished is um, uh, providing some example and representation uh, for people of color, for women of color, for the LGBTQ community um, in law, the visibility uh, that we don't often have in places like Massachusetts in particular, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a real, it, it's a constant struggle to have um, a good number of uh, minorities on the bench. It, it, it's a constant struggle. The mm -hmm. entire 15 years that I served, um, we, <laughs> that was one of my main uh, goals is to, you know, uh, make that, make that pipeline a lot clearer and and mm -hmm. and always have it on the table for whatever governor is in place that it's not just a oh this black judge retired so we need to replace him or her okay. but have it be something yeah. uh, the diversity of the mm -hmm. bench be a consistent goal mm -hmm. so um i i think i you know made some headway in terms of the leadership and the the um sort of organizations and 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 divisions within the trial court of putting that more squarely on the table with, with the court, with the governor's office. Um, and for a few years, I was the president of the Massachusetts Black Judges Conference. And with that group, uh, we were able to sort of uh, get the, the ear of the governor and the Judicial Nominating Commission and folks who are involved in that process to really um, uh, make diversity a priority. And so, you know, the numbers, there are very varying degrees of success depending on which court you're looking at. Yeah. And the superior court uh, can do better in Massachusetts still. When I left, there were just two oh, black judges in yeah. that court and I was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I think that another black female judge has been appointed, I think out in the, in the West, either in um, the Berkshires or yeah. out that way. Yeah. And so, uh, but, but, but these are like paltry numbers, 2024. We mm -hmm. shouldn't still be in one and two and, 
if somebody leaves, we don't have anybody, you know, that's ridiculous at, at this point. That's ridiculous. So um, so putting a focus on that, I think, is an accomplished being being someone, um, you know, I, I had so many people come into the courtroom for it, all types of matters who were impressed and happy that someone who looked like them or who was not a white man or a white woman was was there presiding, listening and making the decisions. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, you know, the representation of LB LGBTQ judges is also, um, you know, I think something that isn't talked about as much, but still needs still to be addressed and, and should be um, its own its own goal to yeah. to encourage more folks along the spectrum to apply and 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 get appointed to the bench. Um, and so I think there's a lot of work still to be done, but I think my main contribution has been being the voice yeah. of change mm -hmm. and growth um, that you don't see a lot with judges because yeah. most of the time judges are very, close to the vest, don't feel like they can say much. And that's part of the reason that I left the bench. Is you are very constrained as a judge, very constrained. Some of it's um, put upon you uh, by the system and the rules and the, and the, and the regulations for judges. And some of it's self-imposed mm -hmm. because you get used to operating under this. Yeah. Oh, I have to, I can't say anything. Mm -hmm. I can't give an opinion because people might know what I think. And yeah. really, when you think about it, that's kind of silly. Uh, you know, people know, people do get to know judges and, and, and every judge is a human being coming yeah. there with a set of experiences. So no, I am not going to do the exact same thing all the time as Beverly Canoni. Uh, as much as I love her on, on the spirit court, uh, we are just different. We've had different backgrounds and different experiences. And so there's no way that that yeah. doesn't somehow impact how I do business um, uh, on the bench, and I think that getting out of that out of that um, notion that somehow judges are this tabula rasa <laughs> going into everything, we, yeah. we got to get we got to get away from that notion because it's not true. And I think you know judges being more uh, transparent about what we do, how we do it, why we do it is really important. Yeah, uh, it's really important to to continuing to have the buy in of the public when we make decisions. You know, in, in general, in the United States, people follow our rules when we make them in our decisions. But that's because we have the buy in of mm -hmm. the public that this is how the disputes are settled. And these are the people who do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think you know, we can talk a long time about that. But um, I, I think that. that's a that's a part of why. Um, why it's important that we be more uh, visible and transparent and um, and not sitting on a perch where, you know, no one knows you or, or how you think. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. my opinion. I, I could probably ask you a few more questions and I kind of want to, but I'm not going to just be just so I could, because I want to move. I want to get to, okay. the, I want to get to your firm. So okay, sure. talk about your law firm. Um, yes, thank you. So I've reopened uh, Fryson Law Firm, and you can check it out at frysonlawfirm.com mm -hmm. um, and, and, and see what the practice areas are, see some background about me, and um, some discussion of how we, how we do things. We've got some great um, uh, programs as well. Uh, so in addition to representing people, one case at a time for particular disputes and trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. We also offer a program called Quick Law in which um, you pay uh, sort of a subscription per year though mm -hmm. and get um, legal advice and assistance and help on, a, on a, a myriad of things that are not litigation um, at no further cost and no additional billing. And so, um, you know, I, I think that's a really uh, useful program for, for yeah. folks to take advantage of and, yeah. and that you can check out from the website to to join. And the, the folks who joined so far have been really um, happy with it. Um, so you'll, you will see on there that we're doing criminal and civil litigation. Mm -hmm. And right now I have 
um, cases um, in different locales and different topics. Yeah. Um, some a lot of employment matters on behalf of uh, plaintiffs, employees. Mm -hmm. um, some criminal matters, uh, some business litigation. So it's a good um, good mix. Some personal injury and civil rights. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a good mix that that um, keeps me uh, busy and engaged uh, with yeah. with folks. So um, we just just getting started. You know, just about seven or eight months or so okay. into this, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's going well, and um, we just began taking cases in. Washington, D.C., in the DMV area, mm -hmm. um, as I just uh, waved into the Washington, D.C. bar and, and was okay. admitted. So okay. Okay. Um, so we'll also be, I'm actually in D.C. Uh, right now, so oh, you are? Okay. Um, we'll be handling cases in, in more than one place and mm. definitely keeps it interesting. It does. Okay, um, I was going to ask you, oh, Quick Law. I love Quick Law. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Oh. It, I, you know, I think it's just, it, you know, over the course of a year, there there are a lot of things that, that happen that I think people would like somebody else to, to write the letter for, to advocate about, to make that call, to negotiate the thing, um, you know, different things that aren't always in court, but that still are yeah. troublesome and, mm -hmm. and, and there's some kind of, you know, yeah. friction about. So it's really good for that type of stuff, you know, including um, smaller things that may even be in court, like restraining orders mm -hmm. or uh, contracts that, you know, for review or yeah. to, to create or different types of agreements, mm -hmm. issues with landlords and tenants, um, mm -hmm. you know, different different things that you may just want uh, a legal voice to to speak for you and to resolve. And so not not everything's in the courthouse. Right, um, so, right. so quick law is really for the, the, all those other um, types yeah. of things that you might get into. Yeah, let me let me just check the time. Okay, because um, I wanted to ask you. So, quick law is it virtual? Like, in other words, um, do um, the clients have to come in, or can you talk to them? Virtually? No, no, uh, okay. you do not have to come in. In fact, uh, so far, the folks uh, have not been people that I have met in person yet, oh, good, yeah. but have been able to yeah. handle. Yeah. And, and it depends on what it is. You know, if, if yeah. I need to right. meet with someone, then we may see each other in person. But things that uh, basically involve writing, research, writing and review, I've been able to do with just meeting folks on Zoom okay. and, and, yeah. and, and doing it uh, electronically, uh, the work itself. So so it depends on the situation, but it's not required that we oh. meet in person. Okay, and um, how is are you the only attorney right now at your firm? I am. Okay, uh, we I have a, I have a great team. You uh, do, but not but but the but the rest of the team are is not are not attorneys. Tell us about your team. Uh, my team is 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 just a you know handpicked and folks who I have worked with in some capacity in the past. And these are really, you know, I, I turned 54 this year. So these are people, everyone that I've known, you know, over over 20, probably going on 30 years. Uh, one of them is a Marine. His name is Christopher Flynn. And we serve together. Um, he is also um, a, um, uh, a law school graduate. Okay. Um, uh, I have a, a chief marketing officer. Her name is Ferenza Walker, okay. and she does yeah. um, all of the marketing and does a, a, a fantastic job at it. Um, there are um, two uh, law students um, that I have on my team as well, and and um, they are just uh, phenomenal and, and eager to to work and, and research yeah. and, and do all sorts of things to get their um, knowledge base up. Um, and a woman uh, who I've worked with at different firms and have worked with for probably 20 or more years, uh, who does IT and administration and mm -hmm. concierge, mm -hmm. um, Tiara Height. Um, so uh, my sister and my wife are also uh, part of the, oh, that's, the that's effort. Good. And so um, now what, do so they we, do? What, what do they do? Your sister and your wife, what do they do? Uh, so my sister does my billing uh, and okay. her name is Jamie Shell. 
um, and and my wife Levita is um, does my administration, and so oh. um, so you know it's it's a uh, it's pretty well run uh, aside from me, um, <laughs> so that I can try to focus on the law, oh. and um, so that so so right now it is, but I but I think that um, over the next couple of months I'll probably bring on a couple of other um, interns or paralegals. Uh, to help um, as we get more more writing uh, that we're required to do. Well, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's another, it's another, another chapter. That's right. It's totally it's totally chapter. separate chapter. Next chapter. That's right. Um, come on. <laughs> you got to keep. You got to keep going. You gotta certainly. Keep. Okay. Any last words for everybody? Um. You know, um, I think my last words would be um, check out the website. Um, yeah. If you do have any kind of any kind of issue, uh, feel free to explain it in an email to me. Uh, you can write me at Shannon at FreisonLawFirm dot com, mm -hmm. and um, you will get a response uh, no matter what, mm -hmm. and we'll take it from there. But um, you know, uh, I think the uh, normal practice areas, the regular practice areas that we cover in addition to quick law really provide uh, some comprehensive uh, representation for people. So um, check us out, um, pass around the, uh, the website and any of the ads that you see and get some gear as well. If you look on get some uh, gear? my, my uh, yes, yeah, some Fryson oh. Law Firm gear. So we have yeah, okay. these and t-shirts okay. um, that you can order. So if you look at my um, Instagram or LinkedIn, um, you'll see uh, a link for that as well. And I think it's probably on the website too at this I'll point. I'll have to check that out. That's good. So yeah, get some, get some, some get some gear. gear. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Get some gear. All right. Well, very good. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Certainly. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. All right. So long, everyone. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to Lawyers Tell All, where Chris Mullins takes you on a journey with lawyers in the trenches who show you the realities of what it takes to succeed in this chaotic, crowded, ever-changing profession. Remember to visit our website at www.lawyerstellall.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on Lawyers Tell All.